Hi, everyone. This is Barbara Josie. I'm a children's author, and I have just published my 55th book for children called The Fisherman, the Horse, and the Sea. I live in a little harbor town in Wisconsin, Port Washington, and I've watched the the lake every day for four years. I walk along the lake and I watch it from my windows and it is just spectacular. It can be, as I say in The Fisherman, the Horse in the Sea, soft as a kitten one day and terrible as a sea monster the next. That is the nature of the lake. And people who live along the lake and especially people who make their living on the lake, fishermen and boat people, um, they, are aware of the mercurial nature of the lake and are very careful with it. So I would like to read you this book and I want you to think about the real people that are in the story that really come from my town, Port Washington, Wisconsin. All right, here we go. The Fisherman, the Horse and the Sea by Barbara Josie, illustrated by my best friend, Renee Grafe. Okay. Lester was the son of a son of a fisherman. He knew Lake Michigan could be soft as a kitten one day and terrible as a sea monster the next. Here we have a lovely view of the lake and the places along the lake, a map. So you can see Port Washington where I live and just a tiny bit north is Sucker Brook where the story takes place. On sunny summer days, the lake spilled over with joy, washing to the sand with cool foamy fingers while the sun cast jewels across the water. On those days, Lester collected driftwood branches, stacking them into a tent on the sand and playing with Evelyn inside. Sometimes he waited with mama till the water reached his waist. They never waited further though, and Lester never waited alone. Evelyn wasn't allowed to go into the lake at all, even holding Mama's hand. She was too little. On other days, the sky grew green and bruised and the sea snarled. The gulls didn't fly and the ducks huddled close to shore. Then Mama twisted her ring this way and that, worrying over Papa and Uncle Herbert out on the water. On those days, Mama did the things she always did, built a toasty fire in the stove, set out dough to rise, made stew. But she never lost sight of the lake, not for one second, not till she spied their speck of a boat on the water. Then she sent for the Frank horse, a fisherman's horse who loved the water. The big bay coach horse pulled the flat bottom boat to shore, depositing the two fishermen safe and sound. Soon Papa and Uncle Herbert filled the doorway. Lester and Evelyn rushed into big arms, pressing, pressing their noses into the woolen sweaters that smelled of the men, the fish and the sea. The autumn equinox of 1895 was a day when Mama worried. On the equinox, the day is exactly as long as the night. For people who work on the land, it's a time of harvesting crops, pressing apples into cider and gazing at the moon. But for those on the sea, it's a time of worry. They believe wicked storms are brewed when the sun crosses the equator. That night, the wind shook the family's little house at Sucker Brook, shook it to the rafters. The roar of the breakers kept everyone awake except Lester and Evelyn. They slept soundly knowing Papa and Uncle Herbert were safe at home. The grown-ups huddled at the rough scrubbed table drinking strong coffee. Papa thought he heard voices on the lake calling for help, but it was dark as a fish belly outside, too dark to see, and so they waited. At first dawn, Mama, Papa, Papa, and Uncle Herbert gathered on the beach, peered into the dim light. There, on the lake, a schooner in trouble. The Mary Ludwig had lost a mast, and her sails were ripped to shreds. The crewmen had thrown out an anchor, so the boat stayed put, but it was taking on water. 
Mama drew in her breath. Were the men trying to escape the Mary Ludwig by launching a small rowboat into the horrible storm? They would never survive. Mama untied her apron and Papa fastened it to an oar. He waved it back and forth to warn the crewmen a red signal of danger. Inside, Lester woke with a start. Something felt wrong. He didn't hear the footsteps in the kitchen or the sizzle of bacon in a fry pan. Where was Mama in her red apron? Where were Uncle Herbert and Papa? From the window, Lester spied Papa on the beach, waving the oar with its apron flag and knew something terrible was happening on the lake. He wanted to see for himself. He wanted to be with them. Lester rushed to the beach and huddled with his family as they watched the two crewmen crawl into their small rowboat. The boat rode a breaker up and up, then slid out of sight, then appeared again impossibly small on the swell of a mountainous wave. The crewmen were strong, but the storm was stronger. Their boat overturned, spilling them into the angry sea. Bobbing like corks, they grabbed the overturned boat, one at the front, one at the back, and held on for dear life. Among fishermen, there's a code. We take care of our own. Papa and Uncle Herbert had to rescue the two men. Together, they launched their own good boat and bent their backs into the oars, but the waves beat them back, slamming their boat into the beach again and again. If Papa and Uncle Herbert couldn't make it to the boat, the crewmen would surely drown. A small group of fishermen gathered on the beach, knowing one of their own was in trouble. But what could they do to help? Was anyone big and strong enough to plow through the waves? Papa had an idea and everyone agreed, the Frank horse. Papa was a big man, too big. He knew he would weigh down the horse. So he helped Mr. Gunther, a smaller man onto the horse's bare broad back. Everyone knew the Frank horse loved the sea, but a horse can't hold its breath. If a big wave washed over the horse's head, he might drown. And these waves were as big as mountains. Would the horse dare to go into the water? But like the fisherman he served, this horse was huge in body and in heart. When he spied the shipwrecked men, he plunged into the lake. Head high, he snorted at the breakers as if they were nothing. He swam onward with his eyes on the men who needed his help. From the beach, Lester watched one of the crewmen slip into the icy water and knew he was gone. Lester reached for mama's hand for comfort. The horse was swimming faster now, racing for the man, still clinging to the boat. At last, the Frank horse was there the shivering man reached toward him, but didn't have the strength to climb onto the horse's slippery back. What would he do? The horse knew what to do. He turned, offering his tail to the drowning crewman as a rope. Fingers numb with cold, the man held on as best he could, slipping, but never letting go. The Frank horse pulled him through wild wind and water, wave after crashing wave, until they were at last safely on shore. Mama, already in the house, had everything ready. She welcomed the stranger, his lips blue with cold and his face white as death, with a warm fire, blankets, hot coffee and rum. And the Frank horse? He was returned to his warm stable, rubbed down and treated to an extra helping of oats. In time, 
Lester grew into a man, a man with a family, a fisherman, brave and strong, just like his father and grandfather. But he never forgot the story of the fisherman, the horse, and the sea. The end. It's such a beautiful story. I feel so lucky to have written it and to talk to the Smith family, get their story right from them, right from the horse's mouth, kind of. <laughs> and I did research at the Port Washington Historical Society here where I live in Port Washington. What a wonderful story. And if you want to read more about the story, of course, you can buy the book. And at the back of the book, you'll find information about the lake and its dangers and its beauty. And you'll find out more about the Smith family. Thank you for listening. Merry Christmas. Mm -hmm.